Because I live in America, I actually have, I actually struggle with affording travel myself a lot. If you are a location independent, a digital nomad, um, a long-term traveler, around the world trip traveler, or even just a budget backpacker, and you're looking for ways to make your dollar stretch longer than is humanly possible. Hi, this is Christine of Girl Traveler. Today I'm gonna share with you budget tips on how to afford your travel on a very tight budget. A lot of people think that traveling is expensive and the thing is, yes, it can cost you some if you, the moment you step outside of your own city or your country. However, it doesn't have to mean that it's going to be expensive. Not if you can find ways to be resourceful. Now, I'm not rich, but I am other things. I am resourceful, clever, and creative. And these are three things which are going to get you around your budget a lot. So that's, I guess that's my first tip. These three things, learn to work with them. Shopping. Avoid shopping. Okay, now I know we all wanna indulge just a little. We wanna take, buy some souvenirs to take back home, but you kind of have to curb that if you want to make your budget stretch. Also know that whatever you buy, you're gonna have to carry for the remainder of your trip or mail at home. If you mail at home, that's gonna cost you a little bit more money. Save your shopping sprees for the very end of your trip. When you finally get to the very end of your trip and you know how much money you have left, that's when you can do your little shopping sprees. Learn to haggle well. If you don't know how to haggle, you feel uncomfortable with it, then check out this video because I did one on it, how to haggle like a pro. I'm American, I personally love fixed prices versus like flexible ones, but yes, when you can haggle well, it helps your situation a whole lot more. Look for dollar stores, local convenience stores, little markets where locals shop. That's just all an exciting way to look into a culture, see what curious cha-chas they have or things that they fill their household with, as well as find little souvenirs that are affordable that you can take home. Now, some of these dollar stores, sometimes they even have like food areas where they will sell discounted food or like waters or drinks, brand name drinks. Uh, for discounted prices, so I wouldn't underestimate these things as well as the 7-elevens. If you can, opt for the mom and pop convenience store. That way you'll be helping out the local economy. Shop where locals shop. If you go to like very touristy markets, then they're gonna add on their tourist rate. When you go to more local markets, they're a little more honest about keeping the rates the way they would for a local person. When I shop at a tourist market, I get the tourist prices. When I shop at a local market, I get the local prices. Food. One of my principal rules of travel is that for every splurge, I cut back on something else. And for me, that cutting back on something else generally tends to be food first. I'll cut back or cut down on meals and I'll opt for snacks instead. Generally, they say that it's healthier to eat light snacks along the way versus huge meals. Your body can't process it as well, or it takes more energy to process. So for me, I, I do kind of like do a lot of snacking along the way. This also allows me to sample more of the city um, because then I can, you know, get little snacks or bites here and there. I can sample different places without having to commit to a whole meal. Once you've committed to a whole meal, well, there's no space in your tummy to go off and try other things. Street food is your every man's food. Due to socioeconomic situations in the past or in the present, street food has been available to every man. I feel like whenever I'm eating street food, I'm taking a bite out of the cultural history. Usually street food will cost more like pennies to the dollar. Next one I would say is uh, small hole in the wall cafes or local restaurants and you'll see a ton of locals going into them that usually means it's popular it's fairly safe to eat um, and the food is good this will be the more economical version to say a, a western hotel restaurant whenever i'm going to a train station a bus terminal or the airport i always have to pre-plan the fact that i i i'm a snacker i like to snack I try to remember to pick up snacks before I get to those places. When Once you get to those places, um, the, the snacks can be a little more pricey than they would be locally. Some bus terminals or metro stations, or not metro stations, train stations, they can have very little or limited uh, options for you. This is also where I might bring a sandwich or like a small meal with me so that I don't have to purchase it when I get there. Take a reusable water bottle. I will take an empty water bottle with me to the airport and I will refill it once I pass TSA. Um, or I'll take an empty flask with me. Uh, these days those uh, hydro flasks or like little hot and cold uh, 
thermal flasks are really good to take because they'll keep your water or your drinks fairly chilled or heated. Temple food, that's an option a lot of people don't think about, but certain countries, um, there are temples that offer free food in them. I think Hare Krishna is one that offers food in the United States. Um, sometimes they, uh, yeah, they've been starting to charge actually. But I know in Asia, there are also like sometimes Buddhist temples or Hindu temples that that offer free food. And if you're going there, they're, they're usually mostly open for devotees, but they're also open for your fellow travel bums. In those situations, I usually like to really respect the culture and I'm really into temples and, you know, um, spiritual spiritual activities. So with the temple food, sometimes you can also just donate just a little bit of money. Usually the amount of food they give is fairly, like, a lot. Uh, so yeah, sometimes I like to make a small donation to the temple or, you know, it, it helps. Social and sightseeing activities. Groupon it. Groupon is a site, I'm not sure if it's global, but it's a site that offers discounts on anything from tour, tours, um, tour activities, uh, yoga. Usually I use Groupon more for sightseeing adventures as well as services. Like I've, I've even tried it for like dental services because a friend of mine in Thailand kind of did that and she was like, oh, you can get a discount. So, no. so I went for like a, a discounted cleaning. There is kind of like a travel section. So check that out. Avoid drinking and nightclubbing alcoholic beverages, nightclubbing, it all adds up and usually you're paying a good chunk of money uh, just to feel sick the very next day. If that's your way of social fun, then you're gonna have to boost your budget a bit more if you wanna encourage some of those activities. Another thing, if you're gonna book sightseeing adventures or tours, I would say book it locally. Wait till you get in the country or the city itself. When you book it online, it's gonna cost you a little bit more or a lot more than you would locally. Uh, when I was in Vietnam and I put a post um, on my blog about how to um, get cheap budget tours um, without getting scammed. When I was planning my trip to Vietnam initially, I was looking at all these tours of places that I wanted to go to and the tour costs were like in the hundred like the hundred dollar range. When I actually got to Vietnam, they were more like in the $19 range. That's a huge difference. And rather than booking online, always book, if you have the, the luxury of it, book while you're already in the country. It's also gonna allow you different options, different tour agencies to um, size up the situation with as well as to haggle with. For solo travelers, sometimes when you're taking tours, um, there's always a single supplement one way to get around that is to opt for group tours. There are certain types of tours out there where it's a shared group tour or like an add-on group tour where the cost of the tour actually gets less and less the more people you add on. So what I've done in the past and I've seen other travelers do is to put out signs when they find a tour that they like and it's an add-on, they put out signs for other travelers who want to join them. That way they can beef up the group so that their cost of the tour becomes less. Traveling with similar budget-minded travelers. When you're looking to partner with people on, you know, activities or go go out for meals, then you're going to want to look for people who are budget-minded just like you and not the people or the travelers who have like vacation mentality to travel. Um, there's a big difference between the two and with vacation-minded travelers, you're going to end up spending a whole lot more than you bargained for. Speaking from experience here, that's how it's happened. There are going to be times when you're going to need to chip in for things. I'm very much about paying for going Dutch and paying for my own costs, but sometimes you're in a group, especially if you're with an American group, everyone wants to split, it wants to just like half up the bill like a pie. Let's just chunk it together and let's just all pay equal, you know, costs. No, that, no, I, no. I'm probably getting like the bowl of soup. If I'm with a vacation traveler, they might be getting the bowl of soup with the appetizers, beers. Budget travelers, we tend to be a little more frugal, which means, yes, I paid for the soup. That's all I'm gonna pay for is the soup. Airports, flights, and storage. Having a carry-on uh, or hand luggage, it opens a whole world, a whole travel world of freedom for me. It helps remove excessive baggage fees. And those fees can add up. It's not only the first time. Sometimes you might have a connecting flight from one you know, country to another and you're changing planes, you might have a different carrier. And depending on your situation with your ticket, you might have to go out, check out, and then check it, check back in again. And that would be another baggage fee. Remember always to weigh your bag or to keep it under the limit. 
different carriers will have different limits. What might be 25 pounds to, you know, major airlines might be something a little more like 17 pounds to other airlines, smaller airlines, as well as, what was I gonna say? Make sure that your bag can fit into the little sizing container because these days airlines are checking that. They're checking that and they're weighing the bags more um, so that they can slap you with the extra fees. Obviously storage is important if you want to have your hands free when you're sightseeing. Always make sure that the place you're staying at has free luggage storage. Make sure you never leave your valuables in it. In either case, I like to always pack light so that I have the option in the case I don't have free luggage uh, storage facilities in my, my guest house or my accommodation area. And I have the option to take it and leave it in something like, say, a train locker. And I think we're done. Um, so let me know what have I missed. What are some of your tips for making your budget stretch or your dollar stretch when you're traveling? Let me know in the comments section below. Uh, until then, travel safe, smart, and fun. I will see you on the road. Sorry, I had to think about what I was going to say. May the girl be with you.